Let us make Africa the true tree of life. Let us make Africa our quadrilla. Let us make Africa the best place we can have that can serve all of us. My name is Kato Mkatsan. Of course, I'm a Ugandan lawyer interested in issues, humanism, issues, development, issues, progress, issues, justice, fairness, equity, diversity, and of course, uh, progress. This is Human TV Africa, and I want to encourage you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember, our YouTube channel is Humanist TV Africa. Please look us up. Find that button. Hit it. Subscribe and be able to watch all our shows, previous shows and the continuous shows. Remember, you can also send us an email at info, info at humanstvafrica.com. Our email is info at humanstvafrica.com. But also, you can send us a message through WhatsApp. WhatsApp is plus 254-74-7356-767. Send us a message and please be able to talk with us. We are Human TV Africa. We are here to inspire, to motivate, to educate, to inform, and give a bit of entertainment in our programs. We are here to learn from you as you learn from us. We are here to inspire you as you inspire us. So we are calling upon you to join us by becoming a member of Human TV Africa, by becoming a panelist, by becoming a researcher, by becoming a presenter. We have opportunities for you if you are ready to work with us. Simply send us an email. If you are ready to work with us, follow the rules and be able to serve humanity, write to us at info info at smartcityafrica.com. This is Katoma Kassan, of course. Today, the program is culture, identity, and diversity. Today, we are talking about culture, identity, and diversity. Culture, identity, and diversity. And this is episode one. I'm going to be taking you through, you through a series of episodes. We talk about culture identity and the diversity and why all of us have different cultures that identify us and why we can be one people regardless of our differences diversity those differences those rich differences that identify us from other people but again connect us with other people remember all of us africans having came from africa 
300,000 years ago, humanity began in Africa and specifically, specifically from my own country, my own area, my own region, East Africa. Yes, we all came from Africa. Now we are different. We have different cultures. We have different identities. And being diverse is our strength. We can be together in our diversity. Regardless of our differences, we can be one. Now, we start by asking ourselves, what is culture? What is culture? What is culture? Now, culture is what binds a people together. Culture is the history of a people. Forget about where definition is in a dictionary. I don't use dictionaries. I use my brain to define issues the way I know them. When I was doing sociology, anthropology, I read anthropology and sociology for like one month at Macquarie University. My professor was saying that culture is something that is diverse. It's something you cannot easily define. Why? Because culture is not static. Culture is not something that you put in one piece, in one place, and doesn't change. Culture evolves, culture changes. But what is culture? Culture is the custom, traits, norms, traditions, practices of a particular people, of a particular society. Culture is what defines a people. Their customs, their cultural traits or traits, characteristics, their behaviors, collective behaviors, non-selective behaviors, but uniform behaviors. Cultures include norms. You must be able to distinguish between a norm and a trait. In law, we differentiate them properly, a norm and a trait. Now, culture has norms, culture has traits, culture has customs, culture has behaviors, culture has beliefs, that's very important, that are shared by a common people, that are shared by a group of people. Culture is belief. People don't know that actually Islam is a culture. Islam is a culture. Christianity is a culture. Now, people have their own culture because a belief can become a culture of a people. Cultures are customs, are norms, are traits, are behaviors, are beliefs, including our own traditional religions, are cultural aspects. A religion is part of a culture. Now, we are talking about culture here, and I'm here to share with you what is culture. I've told you, culture involves beliefs. Culture involves customs. Culture involves behaviors, collective behaviors. Culture involves customs that have existed for a long, long time. We have customs in my country that have existed for hundreds of years. Practices, behaviors. But in our culture, a woman must kneel down when she's uh, greeting a man. A culture which I say no to. I don't want any woman to kneel before me. It's useless. It's very dehumanizing to me. I don't want it. And I said no to that because we can be equal in our differences. There's no way I can be more of a man because a woman kneels before me. That is nonsense completely. But that is a cultural belief among my people in Uganda and also in so many other societies in Africa that a woman must kneel down when greeting a man, when serving a man food. Come on. That is a backward cultural practice. But it's culture out altogether. And I, I'm going to be hearing men who say, oh, this woman kneel down before us. Who are you? What makes you special as a man that a woman must kneel before you? That is nonsense. Now, that culture is nonsense. I told you, culture involves practices Beliefs, behaviors, norms, and customs that are collectively practiced by people. Once the people begin not practicing it collectively, it becomes not a culture anymore. It's no longer a culture anymore. I told you religion is part of culture. Islam is a culture of the Arabs. 
Christianity became a culture of people in Western world, of Europeans. Christianity became their culture at one point, if you know the meaning of culture. That they couldn't differentiate between a religion and culture. Even now, when you look at the British monarchy, the religious cultural aspects are seen when they are having their king, when they are putting their king to power, when they are buying their queen, the region is fused with tradition. It becomes a culture. It becomes a practice that is routinely practiced. I have defined the culture. Identity. Culture gives us an identity that I'm a black man, but more so, I'm a Ugandan. But more so, I belong to a particular tribe, which particular tribe has its own customs, has its own rituals, has its own practices, has its own beliefs. Now, that is my identity. Now, we can be diverse. A country like Uganda, like in Nigeria, like Ghana, has different tribes, and each tribe has its own culture. But what unites us as people in Africa is the Ubuntu, which I see as we conquer. The togetherness, the spirit of love, unity, the Ubuntu, regardless of our different skin color in Africa, different skin shades in Africa, what unites us is that we are all people with Ubuntu. That common factor that brings us together. Others call it humanism, we call it Ubuntu. It is what defines a people in Africa. Now, what is our identity? What is it that differentiates us between, between people in Africa, born in Africa, raised in Africa, and people born in Europe, people born in the USA or in the Americas, people born in Asia? What is it that differentiates us? That is our identity. Number one, our accents are different. Sometimes I look at stupid people laughing at others when they are speaking English differently, when they are speaking French differently. Come on. An English woman will never speak my language the way I speak it. So don't be stupid. There's no way I'm going to speak English as an Englishman. Conversely put, there's no way an Englishman or woman is going to speak my vernacular my local dialect, the way I speak it, because our tonations are different. Therefore, my language is my identity. My accent is my identity. And I've had people forcing accents. They want to sound British. They're forcing accents. They want to fit in. Come on. I don't want to fit in. I don't want to impress you that I speak better English. I don't want that. I'm not here to impress you. I'm here to speak it the way I understand it. If you know so much, come and speak my local language the way I speak it. Because my local language is my identity. No shame in speaking English the way I speak it. No shame in speaking French the way I can speak it. My accent may be different because I'm not those people. My identity is different. They learn my language and make mistakes. The same way I learn their language and I make mistakes. So people in Africa, you must stop laughing at others when they make mistakes speaking foreign languages. A foreign language is a damn language. There's nothing special with speaking English. There's nothing special with speaking French. It's just a language. Any stupid person can speak English. Any fool can speak English. Any criminal can speak English. It's just a language. It's just part of an identity. People in Africa must wake up and say, English is not a measure of intelligence. Speaking French, Spanish is not a measure of intelligence. No way. No way. It's just a language you learn. That doesn't mean that we're intelligent. Because the owners of that language are not necessarily intelligent. All of them are not intelligent. It's per individual. Just like us. Not everyone is as intelligent as another. It's just a language. So language defines our identity. Language. Our skin color is our identity. So why do you whitewash? Why do you, in fact, whitewashing is wrong. Why do you make your skin so brown, so orange, so yellowish? Why do you want to look like others? Why do you hate your skin color? 
It's your hands. That's who you are. Why do you want to be so brown? Why do you want to be so yellow? Why do you want to be so orange? Why? Because your brain has been brainwashed and you think, oh, your skin color is wrong. Even your language is wrong. Even your tradition is wrong. Even your customs are wrong. They are inferior. The one who brought colonialism, the one who brought all these kind of things, is the one you must follow. That is hogwash. This is what Africans must wake up to. It's being called walk. You know your value. You value your tradition. You value your language. You value your birthplace. You value your heritage. Your heritage is your tradition, is your land, is your custom, is your beliefs. No one should take them away from you and give you their own beliefs. Those are theirs. You have your own. We may have universal norms in law. We may have the universal customs, but you cannot simply keep picking everything from Europe, from the US, from Asia, and you put them in Africa. No. Africa is going to lose their identity. There are things which are ours and only to us. We should be proud of them. Number one is the language. Number two, and most importantly, our skin color, our appearance, our facial structures. There's nothing wrong with you. And there's nothing wrong with them. All of us can be happy in our own shapes, our own languages, our own accents. This is the importance of this topic today, and this is episode one. Today, I'm going to be talking about uh, clothing, attire, customs. I want to show you that there are people I'm proud of in the United Kingdom. The Irish, for example, I'm proud of the Irish. But most importantly, I'm proud of the Scottish people. I love Scottish people. Scottish people are proud of their culture. Even when you are listening to a Scot speak, the accent of a Scottish person is different from the accent of an Irish person. Person is different from the accent of an English person. Person, I can differentiate between a Scot person speaking because I can hear a Scottish person speaking, and I know this is Scottish, this is English. They don't force their accents to sound like English people. No, a Scottish person is proud of being Scottish. That's why I love Scottish people. You don't influence them. They are themselves. They are proud of who they are. They want their identity. When you look at Scottish people in their dress code, they are proud. They put on their clothes. They are clean. They walk freely. They love their culture. I love Scottish people. And of course, I love Scotland. Why? Scottish people are proud of their culture. If you could learn from them, that you can be proud of what is yours, but still remain part of the bigger unit, the better for us in Africa. I want to thank so much people in Africa who are proud of their cultures. That is, I'm a Munyarwanda, I'm a Muganda, I'm a Tanzanian, I'm a Igbo, I'm this and that, but I remain African, but I remain Ugandan. I've given the example of the Scottish people, I love Scottish people. I'm going to be showing you some of the examples of dressing codes in different cultural settings very, very fast. I won't be explaining. Dennis is going to be running them very, very fast here. You're going to be seeing how the Scottish dress. This is now the late Bronze Age Irish identity uh, between 2,500 years ago. BC, of course, between 500 BC. That's how the, 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 the Celtic British warriors used to dress in the 16th century. For example, that's an image of an illustration. How they could fight their wars. Now this is the traditional Scots way. Look at the way they dress. They dress their clips, and their kind of stockings, their kind of shoes, the way they tie their laces. They're special. Scots people are special. Look at the way they wrap their own uh, uh, bodies, you know. That kind of show they wrap on their bodies. is the unique the Scottish, and they love it. They love their culture, the way they speak. Is their own language, their own accent, their, their traditional Scottish wear. That's how you, they are. They dress very smartly. They are proud of their culture. They are proud of who they are. They are celebrities. They are Scottish people. I've gone to their weddings. I've gone to their, their meetings, their functions, their burials. Yeah, 
quite happy people and people who respect their culture is what makes Scotland a beautiful country. It's what makes Scotland a cultural identity of a people. Now look at this couple. They are married. Look at the way the man is dressed in a Scottish attire. But we find a Ugandan fearing to wear a kanzu. A kanzu is what is yours. Not a suit. A Scottish man puts on their cleat clean. And they are so happy wearing it. They put on their socks. They are so happy wearing it. You go to shops, I've been going to their shops and taking photos. You look at such a shop, how it is selling these clothes. You know, they are traditional wear on sale and they buy. How many people are proud of buying Kitenge, which is Tanzanian, which is African? People who are proud of buying uh, uh, Tanzu, Gomasi. These are ours. Look at the Scottish, their shops full of their own attires. Scottish clan. Certain cliques, the Macmillan, uh, the, the Macmillan clan. You see how they dress. Certain cliques, they are proud of their identity. A Scotsman, a Scotswoman is proud to be a Scots person. He's not proud to be called English. They will tell you, I'm Scottish, I'm not English. I'm not Scottish. Scottish cleat made from white gold skin. Thank you, Dennis. That is a bag you can imagine. It's Scottish cleat made from a white goat skin. They make them with hands, they sew them with hands, very perfectly made. Look at that, Scotch sporan bag made from rabbit fur. And they sell them and they make money out of this. I'm asking a question. What's wrong with back cloth? You people in Uganda, look at a Scotch handmade sporan bag. Scotch handmade sporan bag. It sells lots of pounds here. And they are proud of their identity. Rwanda traditional wear, the same as Ankole traditional wear, the same as Akiga traditional wear, Western Uganda cultures and Rwandese cultures share the same kind of outfit. Rwanda traditional wear. I'm proud of the Rwanda tradition and I'm proud of Rwanda heritage. I'm proud of uh, my Rwanda heritage, of course, my Uganda heritage and the way they dress. Rwanda traditional wear. See? Very proud. And of course, Banyankole, Bakigan, uh, Bahima, Batoro, all these guys wear similarly, just like that. These women are so, so smart. The different people in Ghana have this kind of traditional wear. Look at how this lady, young woman, is so smart, so beautiful in her traditional wear. More beads and a bit of at here and there. Then it's very fast, please. Ganda traditional wear. These are my daughters on the screen, Pearl and Pride. These are my daughters wearing their traditional wear. You are going to perform at a school function wearing their traditional Ganda wear. That is beautiful. And of course, the can people of Ghana and Ivory Coast wear like that in their kind of a wear, traditional wear, locally made with all these flowers and they are beautiful people right there. Look at the evil people of Nigeria. Look at her, dressed smartly. She's extremely brown, but also dressed in a cultural way that fits with her skin color. Evil people, very beautiful women right there. Among the evil people, the Nigerian people, the way they dress, they love their culture. I love evil people because they respect their culture. They love their culture. They are part of their culture. Look at the Agbada traditional men wear in Nigeria. As far as the 1910, 20, these guys have been wearing their traditional clothes. The Nigerian men are proud of their Akbada. They wear it with pride. What's wrong with loving our identity? Look at the, the Bujai tribe of Nigeria, how they dress and how they respect their calabashes, how they make their food using their calabashes. It's your words. What is yours must be yours. Let us respect our culture as a people. Look at this young uh, uh, Maasai a child, you know. The way they make their hair is unique. The beads are unique. They raise kids to respect their culture. The Maasai, the Gikuyu, the uh, people of Kenya are so proud of their hairstyle. The Igbo men, very proud of their kind of dressing. They dress and they are smart. 
and they are respected. There's nothing wrong with our traditional wear, I should insist. There's nothing, nothing wrong with our culture uh, wear. Look at these ladies, very smart. Group of ladies from Africa, from different tribes. Different tribes of West Africa and East Africa. Look at these Igede people of Nigeria, the way their children are being dressed. Cultural wear, the way they wrap this kind of cloth on their bodies, the beads, so smart, so beautiful children right there because this is their identity this is their culture the ankara fashion in africa many people are putting on ankara fashion across africa ankara fashion across africa from Ethiopia to south africa to west africa to east africa they dress ankara fashion this is part of us ethiopia i was in ethiopia and i like their dress look at how smart ethiopians are ethiopians are so smart and they respect their dress code very very unique dress code, Ethiopian tradition uh, uh, cross, you know, so much respected. Now continue dance very fast, please, if you can. The Akoli, Akoli people, Akoli traditional wear in Northern Uganda. I love the Akoli people because the Langi people, they dress smartly, they dance smartly, they dance with energy, with love, you know, very, very full of life, the Akoli people. Look at the Maasai uh, people in Kenya, of course, uh, they are traditionally dressed the Kalmajong people are like that. Also in Uganda, the Uganda people right there, the way they love to put on their kind of dress and the band to generally, the band in Zambia, the band in South Africa, the band in Malawi, the band in uh, uh, Botswana, the band who are almost everywhere. They are in the Central Africa, they are everywhere. And look at this kind of wear, you know, these are West African kind of uh, outfits, traditional outfits. The Ghanaian, the Nigerian, the Botswana, they have their kind of way which makes them good. I was in Ethiopia. This photo reminds me of Ethiopian tea and that person. This lady is a, a Ethiopian and she's serving their wonderful tea. I was in Ethiopia and I enjoyed their tea. They have the best tea you can talk about. A Nigerian woman from Plateau State. Look at her. Very neat. I may think she's from East Africa because we put on like that, but she's a Nigerian from the Plateau State. Look at how smart she is. Let us embrace our traditional wear. Noble lady from Sudan. Sudanese can be so smart also. Noble lady from Sudan. The way they like uh, their ornaments, their traditional clothing and all that. So lovely. Our people were dressed. Look at the Maasai, the Gukuyu people. Warriors, men dressed in their traditional wear. Let us not copy things from Western cultures. Not everything from them is good. Let us retain part of our identity. Look what the Sona people, the Zulu, the Sona people of South Africa, the way they dress, the way they dress in their goat skin, the Samburu girl of Kenya, the way the Samburu dress, very natural, very beautiful, very African. And you love her when you meet her. Look what the Swana people of Botswana, of South Africa. The Swana people, they are quite spread in West Africa. Look at the way they dress. In their back cross, in their skin, uh, made wrappers. And I love the way they dance, aggressively, beautifully. The Arim people in Southern Sudan, the way they dress and the way they build their houses, very simple, very beautiful. This is their culture, this is their identity. These are their customs, South Africa cultural way. The Zulu people, the uh, the 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 the, the, the Vere, uh, uh, and the uh, the Mandika and all these other guys dressed in this kind of fashion. The Wolf people of Senegal, Gambia, and Mauritania, Mauritania, the way they dress, African tradition, African publics. This is us. We must redefine ourselves. This is the Zulu. Ethnic the dress of South Africa. The Zulu, look at this beautiful baby here, dressed in a Zulu way. The Zulu people are very happy people, very, very, very good at dancing. And of course, the intelligent people, the traditional wear of the Sudan, Northern Sudan, of course. The Arabs there, they have their own traditional dress. And they are beautiful in their dresses. The Arabs do not copy Western culture, no way. The Arabs respect their own cultures. What's wrong with Sub-Saharan Africans, why don't we respect our own cultures, our own uh, traditional wear? 
Remember, what unites us in Africa is Ubuntu. I am because you are. We are one, Ubuntu. Thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you so much, our viewers. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this show. That's been a very good show. This is identity, diversity, and culture. Your culture is your identity, and you can be the same regardless of our differences. Unity in diversity. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page, which is Human Civil Africa. Please subscribe and see this and more other episodes. Remember to write to us at info at humanstvafrica.com or send us that WhatsApp message. See you in the next one. Chimbukola wanadam chenya tamatuni